So, good afternoon. Um, today we're going to do uh, a webinar on Click Promote Customer. I'm going to give you an overview of everything it can do. Uh, my name is Tom. I'm the training manager at Click. What's the agenda for today? So we're going to go through what Click, uh, Click Remote Customer is. <clears throat> we're going to look at what we can do with the login and um, how we can control permissions. We're going to walk through each of the uh, sections that the customer can have access to. Uh, any tips on it as well? And then we're going to finish off just with a, a question and answers if you have any. With that in mind, if you do have any questions at any time, you should see on your panel that you have the ability to ask questions. So if you want to answer those or, or type them in at any point, uh, feel free. And then we'll look at those at the end and I will try and answer all of them. Uh, the ones I can, I will come back to uh, and we'll publish them in a blog later on. So uh, what is Click Remote Customer? So you may be aware we obviously we did Click Remote 6, as it's called now, um, earlier in the year uh, and released it. And one of the, the main areas that got overhauled other than the, the sort of the, the way it looks and the way it works is, is we did a quite a lot of focus on, on the customer version of it. So the customer login, Customers potentially can view all their relevant job information, so it would only be the jobs that are raised against their, their sites. Um, they can create service instance, uh, track the process of those instances and see whether they've been turned into jobs or potentially quotes. They can see quotes through the system and potentially, if you want them to, they can accept them. And they can also control, what you can do is obviously control exactly what the customer wants to see. So what modules do we have available for a customer login? Uh, they can see the sites, the equipment within the site and the site history. They can see job sheets and service instance and the diary, which we'll talk about. And they can see quotes, invoices, um, and also reports, all of which are customizable in permissions. So they don't necessarily have to see all or any of those depending on what you want them to see. So as we said earlier, any questions at any point, if you just use the question tab on, on, your, on your login, um, we will look at those later on. So let's have a look at Click Remote Customer. I'm actually going to start in Click Service because obviously it's probably the first thing, and I know this from experience of training, um, People are always a little bit worried about the click remote customer. Like, well, what, what, what could a customer see? I don't want them to see this or I don't want them to see that. And there's a little bit of apprehension on it. So if we start in the click service, we'll obviously talk about permissions. So in click service, if we go into my click service, um, what you have with click remote, if you're familiar with it, if you use engineer logins or service manager or site manager, uh, sales ones. What you have obviously under settings is you have click remote and you have manager users and settings. When you're setting someone up in here, be it an engineer, service manager or customer or sales, you obviously have complete control in terms of the permissions. So if you were to purchase a, a customer license, you'd be able to click on new user and, and, and choose the customer that you want to, to set up. Now I've done one on my, my demo here, which is called the FM company. And when you're setting this up, it has a setup wizard. And the first part of this is setting up exactly what you want them to see. So there are the modules that we've just discussed that they can see through the customer click remote. Um, and what I've got on here is a whole variety of permissions. So I can, I can control each section of the program that they might be able to see. So I've got, for example, contracts on there. If you don't want them to see contracts, you just untick can access. They wouldn't see it. Can they create sites as part of the access to the sites? Well, that's up to you again. Can edit dashboard widgets? We'll go a bit through more dashboard widgets when we get to the next screen. Uh, can access the diary and so forth. So each section of the program, FGAS, which is invoices, job sheets, quotes, 
service instance, you can choose whether you want to access them, you can choose whether you want them to turn potentially job sheets and quotes into to PDFs. Um, things like job sheets, you get a little bit more control on here that you can stop them from creating uh, creating job sheets, you can stop them from seeing site documents, stop them from seeing notes. This isn't the only level of permission though, and we'll, there is something else which we'll go through to a minute, that once you've set up your permissions, there is what's called a view manager, and you can take it right down to exactly what you want them to see on a job sheet, and it can go right down to individual things like if you don't want them to see the status, or you don't want to see them the category, the engineer, or some of the notes, you can do all of that on a customer by customer basis. The other thing to remember is obviously if you're a little bit unsure about this, the first thing to do is once you've set it up is just test it yourself. Log in as a customer and then you can see exactly what they can potentially see. So you can be confident that they're not seeing anything you might not want them to see. So once you set the permissions up, you can also give them access to other parts of the remote login. So you can set up that they can potentially turn a quote or a job sheet into a PDF. So if you wanted them to be able to print off a quote, job, invoice, you can go to add print template and they will be able to have access to a template that you might want them to see. Obviously with that template, just be careful. <clears throat> if there is anything on that template you don't want them to see, review the template as well as the permissions because obviously the template is not linked to the permissions and such. What I've also got in there is the ability to give them access to reports. Now, obviously, reports are only going to throw out data that's relevant to them. They wouldn't see any other job sheets that are linked to any other customer. So if you go on to add report, you will have a list of reports that you may have created already on the system. But you can also create your own reports in the report wizard, save them, and then they are accessible to give to a customer. So if a customer wants to run off a report, if they give you the parameters of what they want to do, you build that report through the report wizard and click service, and then you can choose that they have access to it in here. I've then got my dashboard widgets. So when we log in to click remote, the screen that you come to to start with is a dashboard screen. This is really good, and then we'll come to this when we log in to click remote in a minute. But what it can do is it can show important data and, and statistical information straight away to the customer. So I've set some widgets up on here. Again, this is done through the dashboard widget slash report wizard. So I've got things like the outstanding jobs, quotes for review, plans maintenance that I might have this quarter. And also I've got a couple of graphs in here, one illustrating what my performance is in terms of a service level agreement I've got on job sheets. Once I've done that and click next, the last thing I've got on there is just set a password. So it will check that you're setting a reasonably good strength password. It won't let you just do a simple seven character one. It's got to have a capital or it's got to have a, a numerical or symbol in it. But once I hit save user, that is that user set up. So their login, if they are a company, is just their company name. So in this case, it's going to be the FM company. Now, what I did mention then was obviously that isn't the end of permissions. There is something in here called View Manager, and this is available also for the engineer version, the service manager version. And it's where if you click in here, you can actually control for an individual user exactly what you want them to see on. When they go into a job sheet, for example, what do I want them to see? I don't want them to see, for example, whether the job is chargeable, if I don't want them to see the status, I simply untick the areas that I don't want them to see on the job sheet. And when I do that, I go to apply and just go to selected module to current user, that will then take away those views from that customer. So I can do it on the details of the job, but also I can do it on the list. So if there are things I don't want to see on here, um, I can untick these so that they don't see them. And I can do that on quotes as well. So if there are things I don't want the customer to see on quotes, if I'm going to let them view quotes, I simply just untick the areas I don't want to do. So let's log in to click remote as a customer now. So on my click remote login, so if I log in as a customer, 
on my version, obviously, that I've set up here, I have permissions turned on for everything so that we can run through it all as part of the webinar. As I say, if there are things you don't want them to see, so we'll see when I log in, I might not want them to see quotes, whatever. They just won't appear on the screen when I, when I come in. So as a customer, the first thing I see when I come into it is it shows me my dashboard screen. So these are the widgets, as we call them that the customer can see. So as you can see on there, I can see outstanding jobs, outstanding invoices, plans maintenances that I've got come up, and quotes for review on there and so forth. I've also got these nice graphs on here, which shows me my jobs that are outstanding by a category. And also I've got my KPI data that I was talking about showing me that I've hit 80-ish percent of my SLAs on there. So with this dashboard, it's quite useful. If a customer actually wanted this on like a big screen or something, what you can do with it is as part of the settings is you can have it set to auto refresh and you can tell it how often you want it to update. So the customer will be getting almost real time view of what's going on with the system and their jobs and quotes and so forth. There are some other settings in there. So if the customer didn't want to come into the dashboard and you wanted them to go straight into say like job sheets, you can choose what the landing page is, landing page being in the first page they see after they log into the system. So if I click on any of these dashboard widgets, they will take me straight to that area of the program. So if I clicked on jobs outstanding for this month, it would show me the one outstanding job that I've got for this month. But if we start from the top, when we come into here, we've obviously talked about the dashboard. Now we work down this list on the left hand side. As I say, with the permissions, if you don't want them to see sites and that's turned off, they wouldn't even see that icon. Same applies for all of the sections down here. Turn them off, they won't see them. So what have we got to begin with? We've got a sites tab. Now in the sites tab, when I click on there, for that customer, I see all of the sites that that customer has inputted under their sites tab in the CRM and Quick Service. So I could then click on one of these. Um, what the customer then can potentially see is a, a kind of a history and a snapshot of that site. So the details tab doesn't really show too much other than the details, the site address, the con main contact on that site, and some notes if you have any notes in there. Depending on what permissions you've give th given them though, they can then click on activity and see the job, the quote, the invoice, service, industry, service instant and contract history. If you turn off job sheets and you don't want them to see job sheets, they wouldn't see the job sheet tab in this section and so forth. But when I'm in there, I can see the job sheets that we've done for them. This can be filtered by a date range so the customer can see historic information or you can see real time depending on you know they might want to see just looking forward this week or next week but they can see last year this year or they can manually change the dates at the top and see exactly what they want they can print that list out as well so if they wanted to print off a list of jobs that you've done on that site they can simply click on actions and hit print so they got the activity so they say they can see jobs they can see quotes they can see invoices they can see service instance, they can see contracts, and then they can also see contract visits that are lined up. So that would give them a list potentially of what site visits are coming up in the future. So if I go this year and click close, it would show me that I've got two planned preventative maintenance visits. One, but in this occasion, both have already been completed. What else can I see on the sites tab? Uh, I can see the contacts tab. So that would just show me the contacts that we have for that customer on that site. I can also see the equipment that that customer has on that site. So if you have equipment set up on a customer's site, they will be able to click on the individual items and then they can see the details of that equipment. So they can see the, the make, the model, the serial number. They can see if there's warranty data on it. If the customer has got access to jobs on there, they can see the history of the equipment at job level. So they can see all the jobs that have been raised or planned preventive raisins that's been raised 
against that piece of equipment. They can also see the documents tab in there. So in Click Service and specifically under the Sites tab, there is a Documents tab. Now, if you add a document in there that is stored in the database, there is an option when you have Customer Remote, you'll see a little tick box when you add a document on there now that says Click Remote. If you tick that tick box, it will then allow that customer to see those documents against that site. So if there are important site related documents you want to give them, you can do it from that screen. That's essentially all they can see on the site screen. They can filter on that list as well. If you have lots of sites, they can, they can find sites a little bit quicker by just using the filter site search box on the right hand side. So the next section is probably the one you would, the most important one if you like. So it's called work. This is split into three sections. It's got service instance, jobs and diary. So the first part of that is service instance. Um, what is a service instance if you haven't used one before? It's kind of like a prerequisite before a job sheet. So it was kind of designed probably for the click remote customer aspect of the system. It's there so a customer can raise an incident as we call it and put the details of what the fault is or what the requirement is pick the site but they're not creating a job sheet so they're not interfering with your your job management system you don't want them to raise a job sheet on the system you might just want jobs for for a viewing point of view they can raise a service instant and then you can review that when it comes into the office and you can turn it straight into a job sheet from the from the instant so this is one i raised earlier and this is what they can put down on the details they can just simply fill in who the who the site is or where the site is they will only have access to obviously their sites and they can put a description of the problem in on there they can then obviously look at this instant as well so this is the other aspect of it when they fill these details in and save it you can set up an alert in click service so if you use the property change notification system in click service you can get a notification the minute they have raised an incident and that can go to one all or some users in your office they will get a notification that a service incident has been raised by a customer and you can review it you can then update it you can fill in more information on there so you can see that they as a as the end user you can change the priority you can update the status you can give it a a fault code and a category <coughs> and then crucially you can then also turn it into a job sheet so if the customer then looks at it they can see that there has been a job sheet raised from it by looking at the activity tab so service instance is a really powerful thing that it's i say although it's you can use it for customers you could potentially use it in the office if there are people who you don't want to raise job sheets on click service but you want them to log the call raising service instance so it's great place for you to allow a customer to, to raise sort of a, a ticket or an instant, whatever you want to call it. Obviously, what that leads on to next is the job sheets. So probably the most important part of Click Remote Customer is potentially allowing customers to see their job sheets. So you can allow them to just read them out, read only. You can allow them to create job sheets if you want them to. It's entirely up to you. And obviously with that view manager part that we looked at with the permissions, you can control exactly down to each individual aspect of what they want to see. So you can see on mine, I have I have cut out notes on here. I've also cut out a number of things in the job details. I don't want them to be able to see whether it's chargeable. I might not want them to see the fault code. I turned off stuff that they might, I don't want them to see. So all they can see when I look at that is they can see the title, when the call was logged, when the start and end date was, whether it was complete, their order number in the customer reference, and then I can see the work to be done, which is what I sent the engineer, and then I can also see in this case, because it's a completed job, what, I've, what the engineer has actually done. I've then, because this job has been completed, I've then got the ability to see on the right-hand side the details 
of the time that the engineer has booked. Now, I have left the financial information on here so I can also see how much that is costing me. So it shows me that this engineer cost 140 pounds. So it shows me the net and the gross value on there. I can't see anything like costs on there. It's just purely the charge to the customer. If there were materials on this job sheet, I could potentially see those as well. I can also see a previous history of jobs that I've done for the customer. So as the customer looks on there, he can see his jobs from there as well. Sort of the same that you can see on the, on the job sheet list. Within this job sheet, depending on the permissions that I've given, I can also then go to activity and I can see if this job has been invoiced. Again, if you don't give them access to invoicing, they won't see this, but it's a nice place that they can see their invoice and potentially they can turn that into a PDF and they can hopefully pay you that invoice. If this job had been raised off a quote or a quote had been raised requiring further works, I can see the quote as well on here. I might see another job that is linked to it. And again, I might see that this job has been raised from a service instant. Again, all down to permissions on what you want them to see. If this job has included equipment, I can see the equipment that was worked on as part of this job sheet as well through the equipment tab on there. And then crucially, we'll touch on FGAS a little bit, but obviously we did a webinar on that last month and you can you can go and watch that separately. There is a there is a systems tab on there and that is purely just for FGAS part of Click Remote. So we've got a job screen. You can choose whether you want customers to use that for just looking at day-to-day -day jobs that are in progress or you can allow them to create job sheets on there as well. Customer again with this job sheet list, they can click on filter and they can see job sheets from a certain date range. They can also go to customize and they can choose what columns they might want to see on here. So they can customize that view on here, how they want to see it. What they can also do with that is they can then print or chuck this out to Excel and they can then export that list out however means they want to and keep that as a history. So we've also got a diary tab on here. Very simple, but what this will do is in a kind of a calendar, Outlooky, Google Diary style view, it shows us what we've done historically for the customer. So they can look at here, they can see jobs that are coming up in the future. Uh, they can see jobs that have been done in the past on there and it will show that information on the screen. So I can see on there all sorts of things. Just my job sheets on there. If I click on those, I can then see if I click on that job sheet, it will take me straight to the job sheet. That's all really what the diary is there for. So that's our work screen. What we've got next is the quote screen. When I go into quotes, what I can see in here is just information. Now, the customer can see the quotes that you have raised for them. Again, they've got the customize and filter screen so they can search for quotes over here. They can, again, choose what they want to see when they come into this screen. So if I want to take something out of there, I can untick it and it will disappear from that screen. Again, they can print or email that list if they want to. If I click into a quote, I can see the details of that quote to hand. So again, using the view manager, I can choose exactly what I want the customer to see. So in this case, I've just got the basic information. The customer can see the quote number, the date, the title of what it is. And then I can see on the right hand side, I can see the financial. So I've just broke, allowed them to see the total times, materials, the net value. And then if I click on materials, it will show me the details of every material item or time items on there. Again, you could just disable that and they only see the bottom, the top, bottom line of the quote if you want to. But what you have with quotes is you have the ability to accept or reject a quote. So under the actions tab on here, I can accept or refuse a quote as a customer and I can put the details of why I'm rejecting that. So in this case, I've rejected this quote. I went in and I, I clicked on actions and I said rejected and it will ask me to put in my name as a responsible user and it will ask me to put some notes in as well. 
what you can set up in click service as part of this is you can say that when a customer accepts it it changes it to a status of your choice the same principle for when it gets rejected by doing that what you can then also do is that if you use the property change notification system in click when a quote gets set to a certain status you can get a pop-up notification so the end goal will be that you can allow a customer to accept or reject a quote and when you do that it will pop up and inform whichever whichever relevant user in click service that you want to do that so if i just expand on that a little bit if i go into click service a little minute in the settings of click service what we have under the module section if we go into the click remote settings you'll see on there that it's got customer quote and accept so i have created two statuses in there one called accept one called reject when a customer accepts it it automatically changes it to accept when it rejects so forth if you need to set up new quote statuses you can also do it from this screen you can click on go to quote status setup and it will take you into the type screen and it will allow you to put in additional statuses on there so what I was talking about is obviously there is something very powerful in here if you're not aware of it called property change notification this is where you can set up it doesn't have to just be for click remote notifications when something happens in the system so I've got in here that when a quote status is set to accept send an internal message to me as a user and I've got all of this information in here so it uses the template tags from the printing side of it so when a quote gets accepted it's going to send me all of that information in there as a pop-up notification so if I just quickly create a quote in here for the customer I'm just going to copy that last quote at the moment the status is set to pending so if we go back in to click remote now as a customer and go back to our quote screen we should have a new quote in there number three if i click on actions now you can see that i've got an accept and a quote uh, sorry reject quote option so if i go accept quote all i have to do is just put my name in if i want to put any notes in i can do but if i hit accept in that there's my quote accepted and in click service now down the bottom there's my pop-up pop-up notification it's saying you can see that it's not very big but it will just say on there quote three was accepted by tom at this time this is the customer i could be in any part of the program but if i gave you subjects now it would actually take me to that quote in question directly and then i can see that's accepted I can potentially go and raise a job sheet or purchase order or whatever I need to do to get the ball rolling on that. So that's what we got with the quotes. Again, if you don't want them to do the accepting part, you can turn that off. You can just give them access to just review them if you want to. They can with these quotes as well if they need to go to print and then they can print off whatever template we give them access to. So if I went into there and went print itemized quote, it will print me a PDF view of that if I want to. No, it's not going to work now. Okay. So, what else have we got on here? We've got an invoice module. So this is just purely the customer can see invoices on here. So again, they can see them on a date range on here. So if I say that they can see this year's invoices. I can see all the invoices that have been raised. I could see on there potentially that I haven't paid these because the tick flag's not marked paid by the customer, by, by you, the end user. But basically, I can see invoices that might be outstanding. And again, I've controlled, I've closed down on here what I want the customer to see so they can just see the basic information on the left hand side. And then I can also see the financials on the right hand side. If I want to see a, an itemized breakdown, I've given them access in this occasion to see the materials. Again, as per the quotes, if you give them access to print, they can print off a PDF of the invoice and they'll use your invoice template. 
So if you give them access to invoices, potentially from a quote or a job sheet, they could see when that job or quote has been invoiced. But also if I was to look at the invoice from here, I could see if I went to job sheets, this is the job that was relating to it. So the customer could go back and see what's this invoice exactly for. It is called invoice and credits. So if you do raise a credit note for a customer, they would be able to see credit notes on this screen. They would also, if it had been directly linked from an existing invoice, be able to see credit notes on that side screen there. Again, customer filter, they can customize this view exactly what I want them to see on here or what you want them to see. You can, you can untick columns on there. And again, I can print or print or export this to Excel as I need to. So we've got contracts module on here as well. So this might be probably the second most important after the job sheet screen. When I'm in here, what I can see if I've given the customer access to this is they can see their maintenance contracts or whatever you want to call them. And if I click on one of those contracts, Again, I've chosen what I want them to see. So it just shows me, this is my contract with the customer. This is when it starts. This is when it ends, if it's got an end date. It might have a purchase order number on there. It's also got my description telling the customer what we're doing as part of this contract. In the activity tab, if you are raising invoices directly through here for contracts, so this could be a reoccurring invoice or it could be invoices off the jobs that are raised as part of the, the contract visits, they can see exactly what they've been billed for as part of this contract. If I go to the visit screen, that will give the customer a list of all the visits that are scheduled for this contract. So this will be using the, the, the visit maintenance, planned work, visit, whatever you want to call it, part of the contract. Again, I can see whatever date range I want on here. So if it was a contract over a number of years, we could, we could change the dates as and, as and when we need to. But I can see on there the visits, and if I click on these visits, it will then show me the actual details of the visits, the visit in question, and then potentially what's going to happen through there. So it shows me the job sheet, first of all, that's been raised off the back of that visit. So I can see there's a the routine maintenance that was being planned. If I click on that job sheet, the customer can then go all the way back and see the job. That's not the only part I can see though. I can, when I click on a visit, I can also see, as I say, the equipment. And also if it's an F-gas, if you're ever gonna plan to use the F-gas, it would show me the systems on there as well. So what else can they see on that contract? They can see, again, the sites. So you may have a contract that is multiple sites. Within those sites, you may have multiple pieces of equipment and multiple F-gas systems. So we've got a list of our contracts on there. If we go to visits, we've got a list of all the customers' contract visits. So these are all the PPMs, monthly, six monthly, whatever visits you've scheduled in there. The customer can see the schedule historically, but they can also see going forward. So you can allow them to see exactly what their planned maintenance schedule might be for 2020 if you want to. Again, they can filter it by a date range. They can choose the columns that they want to see on there. They can export that out to Excel again, or they can print that off so that they've got a copy of what the schedule of visits is going to be going forward. That's really what a contracts tab is about. It's only information. They can't create anything through that screen. It's just telling them the relevant information regarding the contracts. <coughs> so, there's a reporting tab as well. You can obviously build reports in Click Service and you can give access to customers to have those through their, through their Click Remote customer login. If you do that, when you come into reports, they would be able to see on here a variety of different tabs depending on what you've given them. So they might see job sheet reports, they might see quote reports, invoice reports. And when they click on the drop down on here, they can then see all of the reports available to them. This one's just a simple one that shows, for example, 
all of the visits that have been completed each month. That shows just the information using a job sheet summary report. With summary reports, obviously you get graphical illustration on there, so the customer can then click on the, the graphical icon on the end and they can see in a nice graph exactly how many jobs we complete each month. So you can do a lot with this. The, obviously the, the reporting wizard is very powerful in Click. One thing to stress obviously is if you build a report in there, it's only going to pull the data for that customer. So just check what the report churns out through here because you might find that it doesn't throw any data out if the customer hasn't got any relevant information in that part of the system. So the other module on here is obviously FGAS. Now I did stress at the beginning, we did an FGAS webinar last month. If you want to see a really in-depth version of that, you can go onto our website and it's still available to view. And as part of that, it goes into depth with what a customer can see. Essentially, if you're in an air conditioning company, you can give access to the customer to see their FGAS logs. So that can be globally for all their sites. It can show them their systems on there. It can show them site-specific FGAS logs, which is technically a legal requirement of the customer to have. It can show them the cylinders on that site as well. So as I say, check out our website if you want to know any more about that. We touched on settings briefly. There is only really the ability to choose whether they want to auto refresh and also where they land when they come into the page. You can also default the search bar at the top to be onto jobs because they can search different parts of the program very quickly using that search bar at the top. Other than that, <coughs> I don't think you would want to give them access to the site update, but you can let them update when their updates are available to click remote. The help and support will take them through to our website and just give articles on there. There is also a documents tab down here. What is this? Um, so in Click Service, each customer has a documents tab on the CRM. Within here, if you were to add a document and go store in database, same concept that we were talking about earlier, as in the sites, on the right hand side over here, you'll see that there is a click remote tick box. If you do store a database and tick click remote, the customer will be able to see those in the documents tab that we're just looking at there. So you could use that to store important information, liability insurance or some sort of certificates that you might want the customer to be able to see. You could store them in there under the documents tab. That's what, that's what we designed that for. So that really concludes an overview of, of the Click Remote for a customer. Um, as I keep stressing, obviously what you want to see them to see is completely under your control. You can control it through the set of the permissions and the view manager on there. So questions. We've only got one question, so I will go through that. Um, in regards to systems, why only FGAS would it be great for a list of other systems like CCTV? Um, FGAS systems is very particular to that industry. If you wanted to do CCTV systems, I would envisage that you do that under equipment. You can group equipment possibly by category, or you could do it by site if you wanted to. So that's the only question I've got. So what's next? Really just to wrap up, this is gonna be our last webinar of this year. So thank you for, for tuning in. Um, what would you like to see next? If you let us know, um, we will look to, to do some more webinars in the new year. You can do that by getting in touch, give us a call or drop us an email. Same goes if you're interested in any of the things we've gone through today, click remote license, or you've got any questions, please just feel free to, to drop us an email and we will be doing a blog, putting this back on, on our website so you can watch it back again. But if there are any questions you think of after this, uh, please just feel free to, to drop us a line and we will, we will come back to you as best we can. But that's it for today. So uh, thank you for watching um, and we'll, we'll see you again soon.